Welcome to the second example for chapter two. There are two things that I want you to be thinking about and paying attention to as we go through all of the examples in chapter two. There are quite a few of them. The first thing is that we are going to use the exact same process every single time. So what we're trying to do is to learn how that process works. The second thing I want you to recognize is that each example that we include is slightly different or it has a particular sticking point that we want to show how to avoid or show how to fix and understand. And so there's no single example here that is included just as busy work. In the first example that we saw, which was one of the more straightforward examples, we had a car that was driving and then sped up. In this example, we have a car that is driving and is slowing down. So we're starting with fairly simple situations so that we can see how these work and further examples are going to have extra tricks to them that we'll comment on and work through. All right, so let's get started. So in our problem solving process, and we're gonna start with part A, we always want to figure out what the situation looks like. So we have a car that is driving and that's our first step is to draw a picture. Step two is to start keeping track of information in the problem. The car is traveling at 25 meters per second when we first learn about it. That is its initial velocity. This driver may have been on the road for hours and hours, but the first time that we start to care about it in this particular situation, that is the starting velocity for it. Because the car puts on the brakes, that means that it is going to be slowing down. Our acceleration points in the opposite direction, and it is extremely, extremely useful to draw that into our picture. And we're told that it slows to a stop, which means that the final velocity is zero meters per second, because that's what the word stop is, in tr is trying to tell us. And it takes six seconds to do so. All right, so in part A, we're trying to find the acceleration. We saw in the previous example video that in general, we are trying to fill in the blanks on a problem like this with find blank when blank is true. The tricky part here is that that process is tougher, it's much tougher, when we have um, acceleration, so it's tougher for acceleration, and it's tougher for the initial velocity. And we'll see further examples of both of those. The reason for that is because the acceleration is not happening at a specific point. It's the same constant acceleration for the whole problem. And for the initial velocity, that's happening at zero seconds, and there's other things that happen to the object later on that we need to account for. So we'll see an example of that one separately, but that's also a very difficult one to use this process for, but we'll talk about how we deal with it. So in this first part, when we are trying to do this third step, we recognize that we are trying to find A, that's our unknown, and we can go back even to the starting idea of the definition of acceleration. And if we look at it, the list of things we have matches what this equation is looking for. So step four is writing the equation, and step five is putting in the numbers, zero minus 25 all over six. And so that's negative 4.17 meters per second squared. Our step six check of does that make sense? That is, first of all, negative like we expected it to be. Pointing to the left in our convention means negative. So that is really important that we check. So step six, we're checking the number value, but we're also checking the sign. And that number value is consistent with some of the early examples that we had in the lecture video four meters per second squared, five meters per second squared. And so this does make sense. 
to the extent that we can check. What I do want to point out, though, the find blank when blank um, idea, we can do that same thing for A, but we need to, for these two things, have two things that are true at the end of the problem. At the end of the problem, we know that the velocity is zero meters per second and the time is six seconds. That means if we are trying to use this process, that we would use the VT equation. So this is kind of an alternate method to get to the same idea. The VT equation is V equals V naught plus A T. And if we look at it, these, this is the same equation as this one. They've just been manipulated through algebra to be differently. That's actually how we got this to begin with. So we'll still get to the same answer. Um, and so I do want to recognize that it is tougher when we are looking for acceleration and initial velocity to go through this process. All right, let's move on to step B. All right, so we still want to start back with the drawing. So we have a car that was moving but is slowing down. The initial velocity when we first learned about the car is 25 meters per second. And the acceleration from the previous problem is negative 4.17 meters per second squared. We will see situations where the first part of the problem is used for the second part. And I want to point out something important here. When that happens, and that's not always the case, but when that happens, if you got the wrong answer in part A, but used it correctly in part B, you'll get points correct for part B, and you won't lose basically points twice in a row. So we read with you when we are grading assignments and assessments. So don't stress out too much about if you weren't able to get the correct acceleration value. If you go through all of the steps correctly in part B, that's the important part that we're looking for. All right, and then because it still tells us six seconds, the time of six seconds and the final velocity of zero meters per second is still true um, here also. In part C, we'll see that that's not the case. All right, step three, rephrasing the question. What we are trying to find, the distance here, we saw in the first example from the chapter that what we want is x, and we allow the initial position to be zero meters. We don't care what mile marker we started at. We just care how far we've gone from that starting point. And the wording of this question suggests that it should be t equals six seconds. We're finding the distance when we're finding the position when we're at six seconds because that will be how far we went during those six seconds. I do want to note that because we know um, that the final velocity is zero meters per second, that is a valid way to go through the problem too. We could use the VX equation, but if you look back at the XT equation, what you'll find is that it's already solved for X on the left, which means it's easier for us to use than the VX equation it is. All right. So now that we've figured out what equation to use, we write down that equation. That's step four, is writing down the equation without plugging numbers into it. Again, this, this step is really, really useful so that you don't put numbers into the wrong spot and so that future you can look back at your work and figure out what it was you're doing and what tools you were using in any given situation. So we have 25 times 6 plus 1 half times negative 4.17 times 6 squared. And so we get 150 for the first non-zero term, 
and negative 75 for the second non-zero term. And so the distance that it traveled in those six seconds is a positive 75 meters from its starting point. So plugging in numbers was step five, step six of does this make sense? A car driving about 75 meters in a couple of seconds, that is reasonable. Again, we're not trying to be able to distinguish in our heads whether 72 made more sense or 80 made more sense. We're trying to rule out really big problems. If you got thousands of meters, a car can't go that fast. If you got just a couple of meters, a person could go that far in six seconds, and so that would be unreasonable too. We're always making sure that what our calculator told us made sense because we are smarter than our calculators. We just have to be willing to do that check for ourselves. So that was part B. Let's move on. All right, part C here. Step one is always the picture. Mostly to remind us that the acceleration stays negative this whole time. The initial velocity, step two, the initial velocity of the situation is still that 25 meters per second, and the acceleration is still that negative 4.17 meters per second squared. However, now we are not asking about something that happened at six seconds, and so the other pieces of information that we were using in those previous sections do not apply here. Instead, we just want to start fresh with our understanding of what are we trying to find, and when are we trying to find it? So we look at the wording of the problem. Find the velocity, so we're finding v, when it passes the 50 meter point when x equals 50 meters. As always, the reason why we practice this skill is so that it tells us what equation to pick up. If you know that you have a screw in front of you, then you want to get a screwdriver. If you know you have a nail, then you want to get a hammer. Figuring out what it is that you have will tell you what tool to use to deal with it, the VX equation in this case. So step four is writing out the VX equation. All right. V is the thing we're looking for, so it stays a variable. The initial velocity was 25, that will be squared, plus 2 times negative 4.17 times our final x, which in this case is 50, it's in the wording of step 3, minus our starting point of 0. You're going to see that a whole lot pretty much every single problem for the horizontal motion that we just start at zero because we're gonna count from that point. All right, so we are going to write out the two terms separately so I can comment on something important here. All right, so 25 squared is 625 and two times negative 4.17 times 50 is 417. So what we have at this point is 208, and that was equal to v squared. A lot of students forget to then take the square root, and that gives us 14.4 meters per second. We're still driving to the right, so it's positive. All right, so that was our step five of doing all the math. All right, and so step six, we have some really useful checks for this step. Does this make sense? Training ourselves to always ask that question. All right, so the two most common mistakes on this problem or a problem like it is if we forget this minus sign, we will end up with something that's over 1,000, and when we take the square root, we will end up with a velocity that is over 25 meters per second. We know from the problem and from our picture that the car is slowing down. 
And so a check here of does this make sense allows us to fix that mistake if we forgot the minus sign because we'll end up with a velocity that is faster than 25 meters per second. It should, should be less than 25 meters per second because we know we're slowing down. So that would fix it if we forgot the minus sign. If we didn't forget the minus sign but forgot to take the square root, 208 should also not make sense to us for the same reason. So this step six is not just training us to think critically, but it is also allowing us to fix any small calculation mistakes before we turn things in, so before we potentially lose pro uh, points on it. So make sure that we're always thinking through all of these steps and every single example that we're gonna see, we will see how these steps apply and we will hopefully start to see the underlying pattern um, of these types of problems. So I will see you in those next videos.